Welcome to another Business Spotlight, powered by Payrock, where we shine the light on incredible people that make our community thrive. Today we have uh, in the studio, we have uh, Tina Hobelheinrich, who is the current president of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Tina, you're celebrating your first full year as president. Um, congratulations for that milestone, and thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me again. This is exciting. Yeah, we're definitely looking looking forward to this one. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty of what the Chamber is doing for our community, for for Casper, Natrona County. Um, let's kick things off with just a basic background. Can you tell us when the Chamber, the Casper Chamber of Commerce started and, and what's what's transpired over the past several years that it's been in existence? Yeah, you know, the Chamber started in 1903, I believe. And so Chambers of Commerce kind of throughout the country really evolved. So it probably started as a, an organization for men only. Mm -hmm. um, most of the chambers did. Um, and then in the mid-70s is really when kind of the structure of the modern chamber emerged. And about that same time here in Casper, they uh, the members kind of pooled their resources and built a building, uh, which is still the same building that we're in today right there on North Center Street. So it's evolved over the past several years since 1903. Oh, absolutely, so yeah. So you've seen changes in how it how it's impacting businesses and how is in in, in the in the in the broad strokes how has it changed in the last over 100 years? Oh my gosh! So it probably started as um, you know a group of concerned businessmen who wanted to address you know issues in the community. Um, that's typically the the or organizational story for most chambers of commerce, um, and in the gosh, in the last even 50 years to stop and think about how chambers have evolved. You know, in chamber land, <laughs> there's basically two kinds of chambers. So in really small towns, you'll find that the Chamber of Commerce exists to have functions, to host events. Um, and then as your chamber grows and gets a little bigger and your communities grow, your chamber really turns into an advocacy role. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of the things that's happened here in Casper mm -hmm. um, and will continue to get better is, you know, folks will see the chamber as a resource mm -hmm. and the voice for business in our community. And we're going to get into that because that's something that's super important to me yeah. is the advoca advocacy. But one thing I wanted to start with is that there are um, you've been you've been in leadership for for over one year now. So one year and one month as yeah. of April 13th. 16th, 16th, 17th, 17th. 17th. So yeah. one year, and so in in this in this period, you've there's been a lot of changes, a lot of improvements, a lot of substantial um, intrinsic changes to the chamber that that you've put in place with your team over there at, at the chamber. Um, that said, there are still today there are still people that are hesitant to get involved in the chamber because of past experiences. Yeah. Um, can you speak to that? Speak to what's changed in the past year and how this is maybe a different chamber than it was. A couple of years ago. Yeah, so I think that um, having an ex experienced chamber CEO come in. Um, so I was the chamber CEO in Cody for seven and a half years. So during that time, um, I was able to really ramp up my own personal knowledge of Chambers of Commerce. So for me, that started with receiving my IOM professional designation. So that is. Um, a designation that comes from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. from the Institute of Organizational Management. So it's a four-year program, mm -hmm. um, and it really is the equivalent to a master's degree okay. in, in nonprofit management. So coming with that experience already, I think you just have a broader understanding um, and my own interpretation. I knew for me, um, I believe in strong organizations, not just strong leaders. So I always want to come into a situation and leave it better than I found it. So for us here at the Casper Area Chamber, that really meant addressing some um, just discrepancies in how our bylaws said we should function and how we were actually functioning. So right out of the gate, um, I have an amazing board of directors, incredibly supportive. Um, and I'm not saying that because you're one of them. Um, even before you came on the board this year, really it's a group of individuals who wanted to be better. Mm -hmm. And so we formed a governance committee, started right in with the bylaws um, 
And, you know, I had somebody ask me, what does that mean to me? Well, that brings stability. You know, it's like the old Bible story about building your house on sand. So we needed to shore up our foundation so that everyone internally knew what we were doing and knew we were doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. So just clarifying that mission, I think, was really important. Um, And from there, we really hit the ground running. Uh, So we had some issues with our building, um, not being super welcoming or presentable. Um, So our staff spent 10 weeks working remotely while we mitigated about 4,000 square feet of asbestos. And so I have people walk into the building now and go, oh my gosh, it's beautiful in here. And that (laughs) makes me happy in my soul. That's what we all want, right? We want to build um, an organization and an atmosphere where people feel comfortable, um, people feel welcomed. Absolutely. So really some tangible changes, Mm -hmm. I guess, along with just some clarification of programming and um, an understanding of our mission. So what is your vision for this for the next year, two years in, in front of you? What, how do you see things from where they are today to where you, want, where, you, where you want them to go? Yeah, it's all about those relationships for me, Eric. You know, we have some ground to regain in terms of um, members and having a lot of turnover, um, both on the board and at the executive level in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. So um, we're really focused on building those relationships and you know fostering a vibrant and thriving business community that's mm-hmm. our mission that's our vision absolutely you just speak about the, the the board and yes i'm on the board and i'm very privileged to be on the board but i think with every organization you can have a really strong board and a not so strong leader and you can also have in some organizations you have a very strong leader a very organized leader and a not so organized or productive board and i think what's unique about this season that you're in is that we have both of those things it's, well, thank it, you. and again it's not because i'm on the board i'm surrounded by people that are that are qualified competent uh, motivated, passionate about seeing local representation in, mm-hmm. in for, for businesses of the Chamber of Commerce in our area, and it's just a, it's a great experience to be surrounded by those people and be have the, have a president that that is obviously putting things in place that are productive and helpful for the local businesses. Yeah, definitely, I can see you know in the next year or two increasing staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're kind of knocking on that <laughs> that door of maximum capacity in terms of our individual workloads. Um, yeah, I have had the privilege of being part of a group that the Wyoming Business Council brought in. And so there are programs that I have actually left on the back burner for more than a year now that are emerging as a real need mm-hmm. for our community. So I, I'm excited. Lots right. of lots of things coming up. Absolutely. There are probably some people that have that are not familiar with the Chamber of Commerce in, in general. Can you just speak to that for just before we get get into some of the details of what you're doing and what the chamber is doing? What how does the um, the Chamber of Commerce supports local businesses in its core functions? You know, I think that the foundation of why um, Chambers of Commerce have value and work is just that concept of a rising tide raises all ships. You know, when one of us is doing well, that tide raises underneath all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are, you know, industries like petroleum and mining that they have professional associations, right? Mm-hmm. That's what your chamber of commerce is to businesses when you don't have that natural affinity Mm -hmm. and even if you do. So when you join a petroleum association or a mining association, you have a set group of your peers Mm -hmm. who do the same thing. When you join a chamber of commerce, you have a group of peers who do everything. Mm Right. So it's those same connections and that same concept that, you know, we are stronger in numbers mm-hmm. than we are by ourselves. Absolutely. And I think that's one thing. I grew up in a in a um, small business family as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that that so I understand what it's like to 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 do everything, to, to, to have to manage, you know, communication and sales and, and inventory work. You're not a large, large corporation by, by any means. And I think one of those things that you mentioned is, is the advocacy, is, is the fact that they're not alone. When you join the Chamber of Commerce, you're no longer you're this, maybe, maybe you're a solopreneur, maybe you are a, a small business, but whatever, however 
large your organization is, you're no longer alone, and you have that ad- advocacy. You have people that are that are not not only your fan club and rooting for you for your success, but giving you tools and representing you in different places. So let's talk about advocacy a little bit. How do you ensure that you're advocating for the the small businesses, the small business community here in Casper? Yeah, well, I again super blessed. I I don't do that work alone. So we have a government affairs committee. Um, that's one of the standing committees of the Chamber of Commerce. And we have guiding principles in that committee that kind of line out what's going to be important to us. So there are some things that we won't agree on. Um, and in those instances, you know, I think we try and stay very neutral. Um, but there are some things coming up that we need to be united on. One of them is property taxes Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, making sure that the solution the state of Wyoming lands on isn't punitive to small businesses Mm -hmm. or to business in general. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's super important. And then just being the voice uh, for business, especially for Natrona County businesses down in Cheyenne. So how do you stay connected to those either on a state level, mm-hmm. those initiatives uh, down in Cheyenne, or on the federal level in Washington, D.C.? How does the chamber stay connected? So we actually have a state organization called the Wyoming State Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm the vice president of their board, and we really communicate well within that group. We're also part of the Wyoming Business and Industry Foundation, which is a group of businesses and chamber executives Um that focus on advocacy and use legislative trackers. Um, that's sponsored out of the Cheyenne Chamber. Um, and we actually just returned to the Wyoming um, Business Asso- Alliance. Business Alliance. So um, they have a new director down there. And again, just that concept that even as a chamber, we're stronger together. Mm-hmm. So with other organizations all pulling in the same direction. You mentioned the property taxes. Can yeah. you give us some more examples of, of specific things that, that you were involved in that, um, and the issues that were, that, that were at stake and how you're trying to represent small businesses here in Casper locally? Yeah, so of course there weren't a whole ton of issues because we were in a budget session. Mm-hmm. Um, the budget itself, of course, has impacts um, yeah. broadly, um, but really, I think that property tax is going to be a huge one. Some of the federal overreach, in my opinion, that's going on um, is going to be continue to be big issues. Mm -hmm. So we also are affiliated with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Mm -hmm. and they do a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of mining the issues on Capitol Hill. You know, so they keep us really in touch with what's going on there. And there are a couple of big ones. The, you know, the Corporate Transparency Act is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Um, The rules that FinCEN has, you know, put behind that legislation and the bureaucracy that they have created for reporting Mm -hmm. is uh, unmanageable, in my opinion. And the fines Mm -hmm. are hefty. They are. And and people on that issue, they focus on international businesses, foreign entities trying to establish but it's not just that. There are there are different reasons why you might not want your information readily available um, when you when you start a, a corporation, whether it's in the real estate real estate industry or whatever. There, there are different reasons that are valid reasons why you don't want to the public to have full knowledge of, of who's behind that that company. Well, yeah, it used to be you know proprietary information mm-hmm. and a source of competition. Um, th- along those same lines, you know the Department of Labor trying to abolish non-compete clauses and whether or not you believe they're enforceable. Mm -hmm. I think in small businesses, for people who are honest, they had a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm going to sell you my business and go across the street and open up a competition. Right. Um, That's a reality. Mm -hmm. So for people who are driven by their own integrity, like we are in Wyoming most of the time, Even if a non-compete was not enforceable, I knew that that was the understanding when I sold you my business, Mm -hmm. right? That's the right thing to do Mm -hmm. is to honor that. Mm -hmm. And it's right for you because you then have an honest, fair understanding of what you're purchasing. Right, absolutely. And how many lawsuits have, have we heard about that were unfounded? It's mm-hmm. not because it's not legal or it's not enforceable that there aren't there isn't a lawsuit and a small business might be run through the you know the, run through the ringer on on an issue that's 
that that's not uh, that's not legally binding. So I think if we get rid of that, and then on a on a on a, an employee point of view as well, the the employee it, it creates fear. Like the, how are they going to provide for their family if they get fired? How are they, or or if they want to move on and, and they have a better opportunity someplace else, and whether it's uh, you know better pay or mm-hmm. better incentives or better environment. How do they do that? So even that fear factor is important. I don't. I don't think mm-hmm. it's healthy. I think it's it's one of those 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 bills that need to be thought through before they just you know roll them out. Yeah, and the other issue that I am really passionate about is the Department of Labor trying to mess with salary requirements. Mm-hmm. So that really impacts small businesses and key employees. Um, so in Wyoming. Um, I know that that increase that's coming July 1st to 50000 and change probably isn't going to be that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. But six months later, we have another one mm-hmm. that they're proposing. Um, and that's one that will have a lot of employers in Wyoming scratching their head and going, oh, my gosh, how do I restructure my business without that employee in a salaried position? Right, right. And either either businesses have the freedom to 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 pay their salaries mm-hmm. what, what they what they want based on market value, based on what they can afford, based on all these these mm-hmm. di- dynamics or they're not either either way we're a free market and we have free rule and rule to do what we want in our businesses or, or we're dictated to by some of their socialistic government and all the rules and regulations that are that are involved in a socialistic economy so either or we have to make a decision yeah and so i do think that there are some issues that we need to keep an eye on Mm -hmm. you know and and have a voice in absolutely what about um getting access to that information are, are, are do you how do you make it available for the members to to either for resources to get to get information or training and how to better equip themselves for their business yeah so this year um, we actually did legislative emails to our members mm-hmm. with links to the US Chamber of Commerce and um, some of those publications and also just to our legislative tracking software that we use through the Wyoming Business Alliance so you're communicating those issues to mm-hmm. the to the, to the members. members yeah and then also also, you know, we had members for the first time in a long time reach out to us and say, hey, this specific piece of legislation will kill my business. And so at that point, then you can make those individual calls to our state legislators and say, you know, could you visit with this business owner? Because I, I'm not sure that the impact to their business has fully been explained. And how do you do that? Do you have a concerted effort, an intentional effort to, to stay uh, connected to those legislators in Washington or in Cheyenne? How, how is that done practically? How do you stay connected? Yeah, so to the D.C. group, we really work locally with our or closely with our local staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're amazing. Ali was in my office um, yesterday. We were talking about some issues. They are always interested in what's on our mind which i am so appreciative of Mm -hmm. and then dc is a little tougher because we don't have the same access you know to our dc legislative group Mm -hmm. Um, but again their staffs their chiefs of staff having those contacts um is is fantastic so Mm -hmm. when there are issues that you know we need to keep an eye on or have the senators and our representative aware of Mm -hmm. it's literally a phone call away and that's not true in other places Mm -hmm. you know that the local staffs tend to be gatekeepers in most places Mm -hmm. and I don't think that at all about our local staffs our local staffs are like pump houses you know they're pushing information up for the betterment of our state which is great I think we could keep talking about advocacy for a while it's something that's super important yes. to me as well I'm on the, the government affairs committee as well because it's 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 important that we have representation but we also can communicate that to the the members um, but I want to get into the the value proposition you know what is the value of becoming a member of the Chamber of Commerce and how can we how, how do you quantify that how do you quantify that in real terms there are prices you pay m- membership has tiers how mm-hmm. do you quantify that well I I knew chambers were still relevant when I moved to Casper. So everybody says, no, you know, everything is in the palm of your hand now. You just Google it or Mm -hmm. you just look for a business. Uh, I'm telling you, there is so much garbage and so much noise on the Internet right now that it was frustrating to me, you know, to try and find providers and um, right back to the Chamber of Commerce. These are businesses that are real. 
They're mm-hmm. in this community. They have been vetted. They're committed. You know, they're a part of something bigger. Um, I think that that just that credibility add Mm -hmm. is really important. But we have kind of looked at membership a little bit differently this year. So we reorganized our membership into three basic tiers. Mm -hmm. So we have a a startup tier. So if you're a brand new startup, a nonprofit, an individual who wants to stay connected, um, we're going to drop you in one of those packages in that startup tier. Mm -hmm. But if your business is existing and you're in a growth mode, we're going to look at packages in our mid-tier or our growth tier. Mm-hmm. So it's those packages that offer you the most marketing exposure, the biggest bang for your buck, mm-hmm. um, and honestly, the most value. And then if your corporation has evolved, um, I don't think we ever leave that growth mode, mm-hmm. um, but you're more in a developed you know, company, right. more concerned with development of your staff, and sponsorship and being part of a community, then we have our upper tier. Mm -hmm. And all of those individual packages come with a different set of benefits. I think probably the biggest impact this year to our membership will end up being our new website. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty normal for us to have, well, I think our, our tracker, we need to update it, but um, our tracker on our web page right now says we have about 190,000 hits every year. Yeah, wow. So That's a lot. It is a lot, but in April, we had 65,000. Just in one month? In one month. 65,000. In March. Unique hits or we just had hits? Unique hits. Wow. In March, we had 55,000. We thought that was going to be the new high Mm -hmm. um, because of the NJCAA. Mm -hmm. You know, largely, um, we could track a lot of those individual hits back to our search engine. So they were looking for something on the events calendar or a restaurant or, uh, you know, they were trying to tap into that tournament is really what it what it meant. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were ecstatic when we got those numbers. We did launch a new website in April, and it's trying not to be too technical, but we use a customer database model that a lot of chambers used. It's called called Chamber Master. Mm-hmm. It's our CRM. Well, Chamber Master also hosts websites. Our website was not hosted with that CRM prior to our new site launching on April 9th, and that was one of the big things that we undertook as a staff was rebuilding a new website that fully integrated with that database. And it's crazy uh, how much power that puts in our members hand. Mm -hmm. So you have this beautiful front facing website, right? And what non-members don't see is there's a member information center that is member only, login access, that puts you in the driver's seat of what information is out there. All right. So for anyone who's ever done battle with Google Maps Mm -hmm. (laughs) on trying to get their information corrected, you know it's like Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole you go. Um, It's a pain. So to have complete control over your key word search terms, your links to your website, um, all of that, photos, videos, um, right down to where your map is or mm-hmm. where your location is on the map. All right. It's pretty powerful. So you can put that information so you can find um, other customers or they can find you as well? Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. uh, I sat with uh, one of our, in, he's a financial advisor. Uh, and so I was sitting with Jude the other day showing him how the member information center worked. And I said, well, look at, we can actually build a link to the contact page on on the website. Mm -hmm. So when people come and find you on the Chamber site, they're going to see this Talk to Jude, and they can click on that, and it's going to seamlessly drop them into this contact form. Mm -hmm. I said, so they never have to leave. They never have to go to your site. Um, it's it's really fantastic integration. It, it was really fun. So are, those are tools to reach out to new customers or as well as, as other vendors or investors, things like that. What, what can it be used for? How can you harness that, that information? Yeah, so it's a way for businesses to find what they need in business. Mm-hmm. 
And it's also a way for people in the community to find quality businesses in our community. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to get, get into that a little bit, a little bit uh, in, a, in a couple minutes, but I want to first talk about other things that, that the chamber does in terms of educating and training the, the, um, the members. Do you, do you have specific um, leadership classes or things like that to improve our, our quality of life as, a, as, as members, as, as um, business leaders in Casper? Yeah. You know, the one thing that comes to mind, there are several things I think that fit that bill, Eric, but we um, host Leadership Casper. Mm -hmm. So that is an eight month long program. Our participants give up one day a month, typically a Thursday. Uh, they spend the morning uh, with Elise Campbell, um, doing pure leadership development, learning about yourself, learning about your leadership style. And then in the afternoon, the days are broken out by kind of industry. Mm -hmm. And so in the afternoon, they may tour all aspects of education. They may spend the day touring facilities and, you know, things going on here in Casper associated with energy. So each month has a different focus for that day. Uh, we do take them actually down to Cheyenne for business day at the legislature. That's kind of become a staple for us where they really get to see government in action. We were on that trip this year and I was kind of filling the bus in on things that we were watching at the chamber. Mm -hmm. And I had one of the class participants come up to me afterward and he said, you know, I didn't think I was interested in politics, but I am. All right. You know, I, so just conveying that importance of some of the issues that we were following, he's like, yeah, I, I would have never given advocacy or politics a second thought. But that exposure really changed how he thought about it in his own world. So who is the or what is the ideal candidate to join Leadership Casper? Uh, I don't know that there is an ideal candidate other than somebody who wants their career to progress, you know, they believe in self-development and they believe in Casper. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the big stuff. That if if you want to be better at your job or be a better human, um, I sat with that class this year every morning session. I think I may have missed one. I learned so much. So one of the things that they do is called um, intrinsics. It's like a leadership profile, you know. Um, and I was so surprised that I had Elisa come and do that with our whole staff. New leader, not knowing them well. And after, you know, 30 years in business, I was like, yeah, I probably have, I understand how they tick. Nope, I was wrong about every single one of them. But then knowing what does make them tick mm -hmm. has really made us a stronger team. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that. As long as you don't know that you... As long as you know you don't know it all, right. I guess. Right. So these, so the, the leadership skills that are taught are, sounds like they're the, the, the mission statement of the Chamber of Commerce in terms of advocacy and better leadership and, thing, and things of that nature. So you're basically learning how to be a better active member of the community, uh, business leader. I think you're, yeah, I think that's it. More than just chamber member. I think you're learning how to be a leader and understanding the importance of leadership in any community. Is there an application process or a selection process that, 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 that's, that's involved in becoming, uh, or invo getting involved in Leadership Casper? There is. And we actually had, I think we had 36 or 38 applicants last year for a class of 20. Okay. Uh, we're going to be a little bit braver this year and, and nudge that class to 25. I don't think we'll ever go bigger than that. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of changes the dynamic when it gets much bigger. But if you just go to casperwyoming.org, that's the chamber website, there is a call to action that says leadership Casper applications are open. You click on that, it'll drop you right into it. So you have a, you have a longer term vision for leadership Casper? Is it going to grow and morph into something more than what it's doing today? Oh my gosh, uh, that's such a great question. I came from a community in my younger career that had a leadership high school. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not sure we'll get there soon, but I think that there's so much value um, in mirroring leadership Casper with a leadership high school program of some kind. 
Interesting. Do, do, does the alumni, are, are they still involved with, with the current current classes? No, but they're about to be. So okay. we're hosting our first alumni event on June 19th. Um, don't have the venue secured for that yet. But if you were in leadership, Casper, if you're a graduate, just mark after work on June 19th to reconnect with all of the people who have gone through this class. I, I've heard that it's like 30 plus years mm -hmm. that Leadership Casper has been going here. So there has to be just really good um, opportunities for that group to kind of reconnect. I bet. So so if someone was interested in joining Leadership Casper and going through the eight-month program, what would, what would you tell them? Oh, do it. Um, talk to your supervisor. Make sure that it works at this time in mm -hmm. your life. Um, if it doesn't work this year, keep it in mind for next year, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but make sure that you can commit to it and honestly just be ready to make lifelong friends. So the group that we graduated a couple of weeks ago, you can tell that they are truly invested in each other. Mm -hmm. And so now if somebody needs a mortgage officer, if somebody needs a connection at the bank or um, a connection at a manufacturer here in town, they're going to have it. Or they're going to know somebody who can help them bridge that gap. That leads us into networking. So connecting with other people in, in similar industries or, or different industries. So mm -hmm. do you have an online networking platform? Is that what we can do with, with, uh, with the website? Or do you focus on networking at different events that you do throughout the year? I like in-person networking. I mean, we do have some opportunities to, you know, join some folks through Zoom. Um, and when necessary, we try to make those opportunities available. But I am a big believer in I want to shake your hand. I want to, you know, really get down to who you are as a person and how we can help each other. And in my role at the chamber, I love helping people make those connections. So especially our new members that I have an opportunity to get to know, I'm I know that I'm going to introduce you to them because they need your skills and you need their skills possibly down the road. Um, and that's that's really what networking is all about. So we do a couple of our signature events that really focus on networking. Business after hours is the big one. Mm -hmm. um, and I do mean big. They those I cannot believe the attendance at business after hours. I come from a much smaller community, um, but those events are a hit. Are they industry specific or not at all? Not at all. Okay. No. And you may um, encounter, well, you're in, you will encounter our ambassadors mm -hmm. who are from all different industries. So if you're at a business after hours, don't feel like you know anybody, um, approach somebody with a bright red vest that says ambassadors on it. And they, I promise you, will love to introduce you around. So are those events more, are they structured events or are they more just uh, casual conversation focused events? H how do you, how do you build these out? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it really is how the business envisions it. So we had a very different event at PDS this last month. Um, so they had a lot of structured events. They had basketball and I think they had a hockey shot and then they played Jeopardy trivia they gave away fantastic prizes and i mean really just took that kind of structured networking to a completely different level so it's up to you as a business owner if you choose to host a business after hours you can make it what you want it to be they had a prize wheel and i, I mean it was fantastic but very structured it was and, and mm -hmm. some of them just aren't it was very structured, and I thought it was very, very positive, very positive experience. Because even the the on the speed uh, networking uh, a lot time allotment, there was twenty thirty minutes to get to know other people in in the room. It was very well structured, very well done, and you get to know a lot of people very quickly. And mm -hmm. I thought it was a very, it was a very positive business after hours event. Absolutely. Yeah, I. You always go to business after hours and make new connections, or I do. Mm -hmm. Um. And I know that there are a ton of people that I have not met yet here in Casper. So I, those events are, are fantastic. What would you say to a, a member that was considering going to a Business After Hours event? Are they more geared toward, toward a certain size of business? Or are they open? Do you have a, like prere prerequisites to who goes to those events? Not at all. 
Um, they actually are open to the public. So we, of course, market them to our connections, but we also know that our business partners who are hosting will market to their connections. And so it's a broad swath of people who may attend. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what makes the event super successful is that we market our way, mm -hmm. you market your way, and then a really diverse group of people tend to show up. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to someone that wants to join uh, or to attend one of these business after hours events? So I am a shy person. I know that's hard to believe, but I am not the most comfortable in a big crowd. So I would have been one who probably hesitated more. And I'm so proud of our ambassador group because they are also looking at ways to make you know that group more powerful, more impactful. And one of the things that they made the commitment to do is to be that friendly face at business after hours. So I, I would say, even if you don't know anybody, there will be a friendly face there. Find me, find one of our ambassadors, find our staff, mm -hmm. and we will be happy to introduce you around the room. That's a good, good advice. Absolutely. Just step out. Right. Y you know, it's just, I always am like a little anxious before those big networking events. I step out and I'm so grateful at the end of the night that I did. Do you think that um, some of them are, are clicky in the sense that there are groups of people that, 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 that uh, congregate in certain parts, parts of the room? Have you seen that? I have seen that, but I don't know that it's clicky. I just think we have different friend groups, mm -hmm. you know. But I do think that business after hours are a great way to separate from the people that you're, you know, maybe having a glass of wine with after work mm -hmm. and work the room a little bit more, you yep. know, and meet people that you wouldn't normally right. have have in your for in your circle i would agree and i do think that stepping out you're gonna you're gonna naturally congregate to people maybe of similar industries as well people that 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 could benefit from your services and you could and mm -hmm. and that could benefit from your services so i think there's a natural attraction that happens when you take that step out i i, I do see that as well well and it's like that ripple in the pond eric mm -hmm. you know you drop the pebble and the ripples just grow mm -hmm. so i know you i may not need your services but i may be talking to somebody who is looking for right. processing services right. so it's like oh wait i know a guy Mm -hmm. um, and they know a guy, and not, so that ripples just spread. Absolutely. How does business before hours uh, d differ from this one? Is it is it is it complementary? Is it from a, is it for a different focus, different target group? I think business before hours is a little more business and a little less party. <laughs> <laughs> it's early in the morning. They're usually seven thirty in the morning till nine. Um, so it, it really is at the start of your day. Mm -hmm. So that is a new event for us. And really, it was created in the hope that we would reach people who have kiddos after work hours or sports or go to that's their gym time. Um, or honestly, a lot of our sole proprietors in the retail landscape are working mm -hmm. until 7 o'clock at night, right. 8 o'clock at night. And when your shop is open, a lot of us are there, mm -hmm. you know. So it just was an opportunity to hopefully make some networking space for people who can't attend the business after hours. And the drinks are definitely appropriate for a morning event. Yes. <laughs> get, the, uh, get some caffeine in you. <laughs> <laughs> a little coffee, a little orange juice, a little breakfast. Um, b beyond networking, what are, the, what are the other tangible benefits to becoming a member? You spoke about the, the, the website, and I think that is, that is an important one. Mm -hmm. Does the website and the directory behind it, does it, does it help for brand awareness? Is that something that, that it can contribute to helping? Oh, 100%. So you can add your logo, you can add videos, you can add photos, um, and it all just seamlessly integrates. So then when somebody looks for, you know, your services on our website, they'll typically they do a category search. So I'm looking for a hairdresser, mm -hmm. you know, and so the logos pop up and it's like, oh, I drive by that place. I recognize that. So I can click on them and link right to their booking software. All right. So because it's so easily customizable, um, it, it really is like, instead of having to scroll through a bunch of garbage on the internet and pick out a salon that hopefully is still open mm -hmm. and you know hasn't been gone for a decade, um, yeah, it, it's 
pretty cool. So there's that benefit. And then as a member in the member information portal, you have access to see how many people have found your information right. in the last 12 months. And you can fill that out and you can customize it to the extent that we have the time to customize that. Is that, is that mm-hmm. that's what you're saying? And so there's keywords that there's like a keyword box in the bottom, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so you can fill that out as well. And meta description. Um, you know, honestly, you can what I have done with members is let's just brainstorm what is everything that you do. Mm-hmm. And so if you do it, we want it in that search descriptor. All right. So people have a greater chance of finding you. So logos as well as as links to to your your, mm-hmm. your booking booking software, your booking uh, yep. portal, everything. Yeah. Driving directions. Everything. It's like a second website. Right. Basically. So I think it's also magic for individuals who don't have the bandwidth to have their own website. So if you struggle, you know, your website is five years old and you had it built back in the day and it hasn't been updated. This is a much kinder, gentler way to keep your content fresh and relevant. And that boosts the SEO. And so I was going to speak about that. Does it does it help the visibility as well on, on Google and other platforms like that? Is there, an inter, is there a connection between? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I That's pretty much the only way to capitalize on a, a solidly built website is mm-hmm. to make sure that that integration is done well. Are there advertising or marketing possibilities as well? Can we, can we you know, do an ad? You on can. That? They're brand new. So when you visit our website, any place that has a little chamber ad right now, that space is available. Okay. So you can call myself or Jerrica. We'll help design it if you need us to. Um, but yes, those because the site is still fairly new, mm-hmm. uh, we'll be rolling those out to some of our top tier members, but um, they are available to purchase to any member. And so there are filters as well. So if I, if I have a, a keyword, of, I'm looking for a service, and it might not be the way they describe their service, is that possibly there'll be, there'll be a link so I wouldn't have to waste too much time finding the service that I need? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So it sounds like a, like a Google search, basically. It is. But for businesses and local businesses. Local right. businesses. And I think that you mentioned that a few minutes ago about when you, when you go onto Google and you type in, a, like, lawn care you get 800 numbers and those 800 numbers are probably not local <laughs> local businesses mm-hmm. so that does it does it does cut through that as well so yeah absolutely and work with yep. people that are there that, that are local yeah so how many um people are fully taking advantage of this if we could if you could put a number on that is it something <laughs> that we need to communicate it is it's something we need to work on um really showing the benefits and so you know my offer to any member is just call me, reach out to me. Um, my number is 234-5311, I'm option four. Um, I'll come to your office on your computer and walk you through all of the things that that website portal will offer. Um, we're talking about tangible benefits though too, Eric, and I don't wanna miss the opportunity to talk about our health insurance. Mm-hmm. So the Wyoming Chambers Health Benefit Plan um, is a self-insured group that is available to any chamber member. You have to have a group of two. That can be a husband and a wife if they're both employed by the company, Um, or it could be your whole business, Mm -hmm. you know, that needs health insurance. So this is the plan that we have here at the chamber. I have sat on their board of directors um, since I joined the chamber and Cody and we bought in. So as chambers of commerce, we have to buy access to that plan. Uh, Cody did not have that access, so that was something we did um, on my watch there. And I have been uh, on that board for about probably six years, maybe seven. But having the insurance firsthand, I have learned so much more about it. It is so comprehensive. Access to telemed, um, local doctors, of course, are a huge priority for us throughout the state. Um, And just vision, dental, life insurance. It is a complete benefits package for small businesses or any chamber member. Is it specific? Is it uh, for certain membership tiers? Is it open to anyone? You have to be a member in good standing for at Mm. least 60 days before they will enroll you in the insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's not just for the gold level or the platinum? Nope. And we have a lot of businesses who are being told by their accountants, you need to join the chamber and you need to get on their health plan. 
So how can you summarize all of what we've been saying? How, how, can, how can a member maximize its benefits? Because there are several tangible benefits. We've, sp we've spoken about networking and advocacy and, and getting involved in, in Leadership Casper. And uh, Is there also a boot camp? Did I read about that? Can you talk to us about that? So I have had the opportunity to participate with um, a group called PDIA. So it's a community-focused group. Um, and I was at the uh, Blue Heart Collaborative meeting last Friday. And at that meeting, one of the things that DC talked about is four pillars, you know, of stability for our youth. And one of those pillars he talked about being skill development. And so I was honored to be selected as a business leads fellow with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce when I was in Cody. So I studied workforce mm -hmm. for a year um, with a group of people across the country. Uh, through that program. And at the end of it, I was like, you know, this is great, but we need something to move the needle locally. So I found a Department of Labor curriculum and we rolled out in Cody the Work Ready Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. So we have shared that program with all of the state chambers and just having the concept that skill development for our youth is going to be really important, you know, to bring some stability to our youth and uh, our community. Man, that has really been on my heart to the last couple of weeks is um, how do we build enough capacity in that space and at the chamber so that we can start offering that program. Mm -hmm. But it's really good for employee development. And really how it came about was I had a member tell me I hired somebody and I just said, will you greet the next person who walks in? And this 20 something year old employee did not know what I was asking her to do. All right. So, you know, it's the customer service skills, it's the work ethic, it's um, ethics in general, mm -hmm. you know, all of those soft skills. And so you see that through the, a boot camp type? Uh, I do. Type so, how we rolled it out, um, the focus to get people work ready. Mm -hmm. So, it was six weeks, mm -hmm. um, once a week for two hours. So, it was a 12 week training. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, we offered it free to our community there. And it's something that I would really like to see move forward a little bit here. I think it'd be very vital. I think it's important that the, that the youth have opportunities to learn these things. They're, mm -hmm. they're not always given the opportunity to learn them in different contexts and situations. But if we can, if we can be that, that, that voice or that, that, that group that helps them learn these life skills, it's only for the betterment of, of, of Casper and, and Wyoming in general. Yeah, and I, I tapped local business leaders to be the instructors for the classes. So mm -hmm. it was also a great way for them to interact with you know, younger people that maybe they, wouldn't, they weren't interacting with. So That's great. That's yeah. what's a wonderful program. So thank you very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, give you one last opportunity. If you could, if, what's your message to Casper businesses that are considering joining um, the Chamber of Commerce here? I am a firm believer in the power of relationships. And I know that owning a business can be very isolating. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just encourage you to not go it alone. Mm -hmm. You know, help, let us help connect you to a peer group to other people who are like-minded and in business and likely facing the same struggles that you are. Um, and honestly, just give us a shot at being a resource for you. Definitely, definitely, and I would concur. Thank you again for joining us on today's uh, Business Spotlight that's powered by, by Payrock. Make sure you like and subscribe to this, this channel and, and share it. Um, I think more people, when they hear about what the, what the Chamber is doing and the tangible benefits, they will definitely want to get a little more curious. So thank you very much. Thanks, Eric.